And joining us live in the studio is Bennett Joseph. He's a journalist and a social political commentator. It's good to have you join us. Mary Ann, thank you for having me. So, of course, this has had social media and everybody else talking um, because we have, as Nigerians, noticed that our level of indebtedness is, is becoming a never-ending one. And what are your thoughts on former President Obasanjo's speech? Well, first off, we need to always show gratitude and appreciation to the former president, uh, uh, former president Olusegun Obasanjo. Uh, on social media, the the views uh, the views vary. While some see him as a hero, some also think perhaps some of the past leaders are also a part of the problem. But we need to show appreciation to the man because. Time and time again, he continues to call national consciousness with regards to governance and how he believes the country uh, should be run. And for that, for me, I see him as a true uh, statesman and one who holds uh, Nigeria at heart. Having said that, when you look, take a look at his speech, which he, he delivered yesterday, uh, a speech titled um, Nigeria, uh, the challenges of debt and uh, the sustenance of democracy, he made a whole lot of salient points. And part of those points he mentioned was the fact that if Nigeria as a country is not careful, we are headed towards bankruptcy. And that's true. I mean, because when you look at some of the figures he mentioned and the statistics, where in 2015, for instance, we had a debt record of about $10 billion. By three or four or five years afterwards, it's now about $18 billion. Now, having said that, we have a president, we have an administration who is within the process of uh, asking for approval for another $29 billion uh, from the uh, Ahmed Lawan-led uh, uh, legislature. So when, when you look at all of these concerns and you look at all of the dynamics, you, you, you have a sense of where the former president is coming from. And uh, he, he's showing concern for the future generations, those who will come after this generation, and how are we going to offset those debts? Now, uh, you seem to think that we have a debt problem. Yes, we have a debt problem. We do. We had a debt problem. How come it seems the members of the political class are not really worried or perturbed about it? Because the president just got um, a sign-off by the National Assembly to borrow more, more money. More money, yeah. And of course, 37... Y yeah, you're 3. right. 3.7 billion or something. Miriam, you're right. Incredible we amount is going to be sunk into the building or refurbishing of the National, of the National Assembly. Assembly. So what's it, are we prioritizing? You're right? absolutely right. Because when you look at the body language of the current administration, you have a sense of, well, perhaps this, this, this leaders are not aware or they're not conscious of the damage that could happen if we continue to pile, pile up. Uh, at debt because at the end of the day, one of the points President Olusegun Obasanjo made yesterday was that, at its as it stands, if we have to offset the current debt, we have to spend about fifty percent of our foreign revenue offsetting those debts. It's 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 almost impossible that if we do that, we're not going to go bankrupt. But again, like I said, when you look at the body language of the current administration, you have a feel of perhaps maybe they don't have a clear or broader picture of what crisis could occur as a result of this continuous pileup of debt. And that's why we have the media and statesmen like President Olusha, former President Olusha Gwambasanjo to call the government to consciousness to say, Oh, because don't forget again that under the Saraki-led National Assembly, this attempt to borrow this same amount of money, about $29 billion, was presented before the Saraki-led uh, State House uh, National Assembly, and it was refused. Uh, perhaps right now, considering the fact that the APC perhaps outnumbered the opposition in the National Assembly, the president perhaps thinks it's a good time to present such uh, an appeal to borrow. Or, uh, the problem is not really about borrowing the money. The problem is about discipline and making use of the money to develop infrastructure, to drive development in such a way that the country can generate more revenue and we can offset the debts. But what we see in Nigeria... But isn't that, the, isn't that the narrative that is being sold to us? But then at the end of the day... Uh, we don't see infrastructure. Yes, exactly. That we don't actually, see the because this, um, I think the World Bank published a report earlier this year about yep. countries who are economically viable and have been using the funding or the debt, um, the loans from the IMF mm -hmm. to develop the economies and there's been plowed back profit. Unlike Nigeria, what they said about Nigeria, yes. yes, yes, the IMF, that was in November, actually just last month, the IMF showed concern about the 
growing debt rate for Nigeria as a country and said, oh, guys, you need to put your acts together and cut this down. You need to try to see how you can invest in other sectors, agribusiness and the likes. Because don't forget that oil and gas, which we really consider as the main uh, uh, resource for generating foreign revenue, uh, well, it's beginning to lose as much importance as it's had many years ago. And that's because of a whole lot of factors when you look at uh, climate change and you look at the fact that other countries are beginning to discover oil in various, uh, in various countries and they are offering uh, better incentives to uh, oil and gas, international oil and gas investors. So, so when, you look at, uh, when you look at all of these, you, you want to agree with the former uh, president to say that, okay, perhaps the, the current administration needs to to, you know, go back to the drawing board and understand that it will be doing more harm than good to the economy if we continue to pile up uh, these debts. I want to, uh, it's a question that's been bothering me. If we know how um, dreadful, to mm -hmm. use the word loosely here, or how damaging this could be for us, mm -hmm. not just today, but yeah. tomorrow, how come we're still going? And do you think, again, if there is no way to borrow. Probably we would begin to look within ourselves to become more viable. Marianne, don't, don't get me right, Marianne. The, the thing is, it is, it's actually not wrong to borrow. In actual of course, fact, because other countries yes, borrow. Yes, stronger economies actually borrow. But the, the problem when it comes to Nigeria and a number of other African countries is the problem of discipline. Now, how do you use what you have borrowed to better your economy, to improve education, health care, all the sectors? Who is to police the government? Who polices the government? Uh, primarily being And how can we make sure that those monies are accounted for? Primarily being a journalist, I always think that it starts from the media too, because I mean, as the fourth realm of the estate, we need to constantly call the government. Uh, we need to hold them accountable. We need to, we have a platform that amplifies our voices, that gives us the ability to speak and be heard by the government. Mm -hmm. But again, we have uh, uh, statesmen like President Olusha Guabasanjo, whether or not you like him, continues to, like I said, call national consciousness. But again... But do they listen? This is the thing. Yeah, we, we, we do can't... We, should we be, I always ask, be, should we be shooting the messenger instead of taking the message? And how can we make sure that these messages are received and not... Um, some way blurred into political and you know religious we just or need to keep lines. talking we just need to keep talking we the louder our voices get i believe the government will begin to do the needful don't forget that when president Mohamed buhari presented the appeal to borrow 29 billion dollars from the ahmed lawan uh led uh, national assembly uh a whole lot of there were a whole lot of, of uh, backlash from uh nigerians especially via social media saying this is unacceptable we we cannot continue this way especially if you cannot give if you can, but it if was I, approved uh, no so far it has it's the it's the process is still on it has not been approved we are hopeful that the government at this time they've heard what we have said they've, they've listened to us but again one thing i would like to clarify is it is not wrong to borrow but our leaders must have the discipline to ensure that what is being borrowed is used to improve the economy to improve infrastructure and he mentioned a couple of states he mentioned lagos cross river and a couple of other states where infrastructures were supposed to be developed with the, uh, developed with the monies that were borrowed but at the end yeah, of the day the state government decided to do otherwise to yeah. well thank you very much bennett joseph is a journalist and a socio-political commentator thank you for speaking it's with my us. pleasure